Hi everyone. So you've invested a significant amount of money and had solar panels and maybe a home battery installed too. Great. Now you're wondering what can I do with them and how do I get my money back for this expensive install as quickly as possible and start making a profit. Okay, so I know payback might not be the only reason someone might want to install solar. You may wish to install it to help do a bit for the environment, reduce your bills, to offer flexibility by reducing your demand on the grid. However, in this video, I'm going to focus on five methods that you can set up in order to reduce your payback time significantly. Now the payback on these will vary depending on a number of factors, but hopefully this gives you some food for thought on how to practically optimize your system. Now for those a little further back in the journey and just debating whether to get solar and home battery installed, later in this video, I'm going to show you some online tools that I used to work out the economics for my system and estimate a realistic payback period. Because at the end of the day, solar and battery are a big expense and should be considered carefully. It's always great to hear where you're at on this stage of the journey. So be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's get into the list. Number one, tariff selection. So assuming you've got this far, you hopefully have a good grip on your usage pattern for daily, monthly, and annual usage. Once you understand your usage patterns thoroughly, you can then select the tariff most appropriate for your usage. Selecting the correct tariff is probably the single biggest factor relating to the payback of the system. So to give you a very basic example, and I'm keeping the numbers simple here, but let's assume that you use 5,000 kilowatt hours per year of electricity and spend 10,000 pounds on a solar array and battery install. Let's say you can reduce grid usage by utilizing 50% of the solar generation by either using it in the house or sending it to a battery. So 2,500 is still drawn from the grid throughout the year. If you're on a standard energy price cap guarantee of 34 pence per kilowatt hour, as it is at the time of making this video, that would result in an annual spend of 850 pound versus 1,700 pounds without solar. So a saving of 850 pound per year. Now let's assume you can get on a cheap overnight tariff that charges only 10 pence per kilowatt hour at certain times of the early morning and that you can use these hours to fill the battery overnight and then use that power when the price will be higher during the day if you are drawn from the grid. That 2,500 kilowatt hours draw from the grid then becomes £250 per year versus 1,700 without solar. A bigger saving of 1,450 and reducing your payback right down to 6.9 years. A massive difference in nearly half the time versus being on the standard energy price gap guarantee price. Now I know this is a very crude example and making a lot of assumptions here. It does give you some idea of the difference a right tariff selection can make. If we have a look at some of the tariff options, there are a vast number to choose from, in particular from Octopus's innovative range of tariffs. They pretty much now cater for every scenario with their smart tariffs such as Octopus Go and Octopus Intelligent for electric vehicle owners, Flux for solar and home battery users and cozy for heat pump users. I won't go into details of all the tariffs right now but I might do a mini series on these if this would be useful in future. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this. I've also done a video recently about my first week on Octopus's new flux tariff. If you'd like to see that click on the link in the top right corner now or it's also linked in the description after you watch this video. I've been really impressed with the innovation that Octopus have shown in this space and would really recommend the customer service as well. If you're interested in moving to Octopus Energy, I have a link on the screen at the moment which lets you sign up and gives you £50 free credit. I also get £50 as well, so it'd be great if you could use that link if you get some value from this video. The link is also listed in the description as well. So it's important to do the sums yourself for your own usage patterns and generation. Some of the factors that may influence your decision on which tariffs to go on are do you have an EV? Do you have a heat pump? Are you looking to move to a more electric centric household in future? How much energy do you use on a daily basis and could some of this usage be shifted to off-peak times? Also think about future proofing this. As more things move towards electric power, I think it's careful that you your size your system and the tariff for future as well. Number two is export payments. So the second part of this equation for your tariff selection is ensuring that you're on the correct export tariff. Remember you essentially now have a mini power plant on your roof and some of the available tariffs allow you to sell your excess electricity back to the grid for decent rates. This will depend on the region you live in but for me in the northeast of England the octopus flux tariff that I'm on gives me 21 pence during the day and 34 pence between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. at night. Let's take another crude example and assume that you export 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity throughout the year. Let's say we're on octopus flux and we export most during the day, but also some between 4 and 7. 
which gives us an average rate of 26 pence per kilowatt hour. For the year, this could make you £520, helping to reduce your payback dramatically. You need to check the tariff terms and conditions here. As for some of the smart tariffs, such as Octopus Go and Octopus Intelligent, you're not allowed to combine these smart tariffs with some of the higher export rates, and you're likely to be on the SEG or standard export guarantee payment of a couple of pence per kilowatt hour. In this case, it's usually better to utilise as much of the solar power as you can to avoid exporting excess energy and then having to buy it back when you need it from the grid. Number three is using power at the right time of the day. Now, notice I said using power at the right time of the day, not just when it's sunny. Again, this is all dependent on the tariff, and generally, it makes more sense to use appliances such as a washer, dishwasher, and kettles when the sun is shining if you can. This means that you're getting this as free energy rather than importing from the grid to power your white goods at 34 pence or whatever price you tariff that. You need to be careful sometimes though to not use all these appliances at once when the sun's shining as depending on your inverter limits you may end up drawing from the grid anyway if you use them all at once. It's usually best to run these appliances one after the other whilst the sun shines if possible. There may be some tariffs where it makes more sense to use your white goods during the off-peak times in the tariff overnight and then it allows you to export at a better rate during the day. Again it's important you do your sums here to work out what's best for you and your situation. Number four is buying an electric vehicle. Now I'm aware that both the outlay for electric vehicles and some limitations on whether you can actually charge at home may scupper of this idea, but if you're looking to replace your car anyway then maybe this is a good option for you. Compared with 2020 the costs are now starting to come down dramatically and the second hand car market is now starting to fill with decently priced electric vehicles. And despite what some papers and news outlets will tell you, it's still generally cheaper to power your electric vehicle when charging at home versus a comparable diesel or electric car. Now personally, I'd love to own a Tesla Model 3 Performance and I'm currently saving up for one. And the fuel saving and servicing costs will be a big factor in reducing the overall running costs when I get around to purchasing one. Mm. Let's look at another example. So currently I do about 10,000 miles per year in my car and spend around 180 to 200 pound per month on diesel. Based on my own calculations matching that mileage, I estimate that an electric vehicle would cost only 50 pounds to run and that's on the tariff I'm currently on, which costs 20 pence per kilowatt hour. So a big saving and not even the cheapest tariff for EVs either. Number five is combining with other renewable energy systems. Along the same lines as number four, and again, a very big outlay for these, but powering your house with electric heating and hot water is another way you can reduce your bills and reduce your payback time when combining it with solar power. Now I've heard a few people describing installing solar power as the first piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Once you get solar, then EVs suddenly make a lot of sense. Heat pumps then make a lot more sense and they all fit together just nicely and allow you to reduce your bills and household running costs. Heat pump installations can be quite complex and it's important that they size correctly for your house and may even require upgrades to radiators and pipe work, but they can be up to 300 to 400% efficient, maybe even more in some cases. And when you compare that to a gas boiler, which is generally about 90% efficient, it certainly makes a big difference. In a 300% efficient heat pump, one kilowatt hour of electricity would be converted to three kilowatt hours of heat into the home. The channel Heat Geek have some brilliant videos here, so I'll link that in the description as well. I think as this technology develops, the prices will start to come down and the technology can only get better. And there's also some government grants available of up to £5,000 to help you install a heat pump. For me personally, this is something I would like to do at some point in the future. But right now, I don't think they make financial sense for my situation. I have a relatively new house with a four-year-old boiler that works absolutely fine and my heating costs are generally relatively low anyway. The initial outlay is also a big factor here and I think the government can do more to encourage users to take up heat pumps, especially if they want to hit the rates that they've set to meet the targets for 2030. There's also a couple of other things which I haven't included in the list which you can do to reduce your solar payback time, one of which is paying off your system in full if you can so you're not paying interest on credit or on a loan and another is to ensure that if there's any shading from trees maybe you can trim these trees back to allow you to get the most from the generation that your solar panels create. Now I mentioned at the start of this video about a couple of online tools which help to estimate your payback for your system and your circumstances. Again I'll link all of these in the description but there's a couple of sites which I found very useful when sizing my system and deciding what I wanted. The first of which is Great Home. They have a brilliant online calculator where you can plug in your details and it will work out a payback figure based on a number of assumptions. It will also take into account if you have a battery installed alongside your solar panels. If I plug my predicted figures into the site, you can see an estimated payback of between seven and eight years which is what I based my figures on when I got the system installed. After having the system for a couple of months, I'm hopeful that the payback will be a little bit less than seven to eight years, but I feel it's a pretty accurate representation of what I can expect. The second site is the PGIS site. Again, you can plug in your details for where you live 
and this will spit out an estimate of what you can expect to generate throughout the year based on your roof direction, pitch, the amount of solar you have installed and where you are in the world. If we compare this to my actual generations, it shows that it's pretty close, maybe slightly underestimated. EV Man has also created a very helpful video recently as to whether you should install solar in 2023. Again, I'll link that in the description below, but it should give you some food for thought and based on your own situation and your own calculations. Anyway, that's it for this video. In summary, tariff selection for import and export is key, and then combining that over time with other renewable systems can really help to reduce the payback on your system. I hope you found this video useful, and if so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.